It's Tuesday on Melrose Mountain, higher ground, and uh, we're still studying in the book of Mark, chapter 4, verses 26 through 29. Let me read it to you in its full context. And he was saying, that is Jesus, the kingdom of God is like a man who casts seed upon the soil, and he goes to bed at night and gets up in the day, and the seed sprouts and grows, how he himself does not know. The soil produces a crop by itself, first the blade, then the head, then the mature grain in the head. But when the crop permits, he immediately puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Now, there's certainly divine speculation on this passage of scripture. If you were to read three or four commentaries, you'll get three or four different definitions or three or four different interpretations of the story. Most agree that it's tied into the parable of the sower, even though another parable separates them. The kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? Well, it's that which resides in our hearts, it's that which resides here on earth, and it's that which resides in the thousand year reign, and it's that which resides in heaven. The kingdom of God is like a man who casts seed upon the soil. When Jesus defined the parable of the sower, he said the soils were various people. Some were shallow, didn't grow. Some were filled with weeds and thorns, was choked out. Uh, some was good soil. Some was hard soil. Here we have to believe that the soil would still take on the same meaning, that the soil are various people, and that when we share the word of God with them, without our having any idea how it all works, the Holy Spirit stirs within their hearts to bring them into the kingdom of God. In their hearts, they believe and trust fully in Jesus. So how the seed sprouts and grows, we really don't know. It's amazing to me as I've preached in many churches and many times and over th literally hundreds of sermons. It's always amazing to me where the seed falls and how the soil responds to the message that I preached. But it is the soil itself. It's not my will. It's the will of the soil. As the Holy Spirit stirs that soil, whether or not it produces a crop and is added to the kingdom. The interesting part about this is verse 29. When the crop permits, he immediately puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Is this looking towards the end of a person's life after it's produced whatever crop it's going to reproduce? Is this looking at the end of the age when Christ will put in the sickle for the final harvest? It's divine speculation, no matter which way you interpret the story. Because Jesus doesn't define this one for us. Not only that, but we can't go to Marth, Mark, excuse me, we can't go to Matthew or Luke or John to find a parallel passage that might give us new insight. But the fact of the matter is, there is a time when a sickle will be put in and the harvest has come. And certainly, if this person is in the kingdom of God, uh, there's no fear for this time of harvest, whether it be at the end of our lives or whether it be at the end of the age. The fact of the matter is, it has to be soil which has received the seed. The seed which has grown and has reproduced. Are you that kind of soil? Has the seed of God been sown in your life, and your heart? Are you part of the kingdom of God? And when the sickle is thrown in, will you be harvested to heaven? Or will you be separated 
and go to a place of burning and fire. You see, the scripture talks about that. I hope that today, as you reflect on this passage of scripture, you whether it's at the end of your lifetime or whether it's at the end of the age, that you're part of the harvest which put, is put into his barn, part of the kingdom of God. It's your thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.